Hi, I'm George, and today we'll be doing this Happy Halloween card here in Photoshop Elements. Now, if you like this video, hit that like button, click on share, click on subscribe, hit that bell icon for notifications of my new videos, and check out the link below for my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. It's the best way to learn this graphics program. I know this is early for this card, but if I wait any longer, pretty soon I'll be seeing this stuff about Christmas. So in order to beat all that Christmas rush from all the stores, let's get this card done now. The first thing we need to do is this trick or treat tombstone over here on the left hand side. Let me just close this out of the way and I'll click on save on that. There we are. We'll start off with a brand new file, blank file. I have mine set at the default Photoshop Elements size. That's a width of six, height of four, resolution of 300, which is your printing resolution and choose OK. There we go. I'll just put that right there. Now to do the tombstone, We'll start off by putting in a shape. First, go over here and make sure that your foreground background colors are set to their default settings. That's black in front, white in back. And then go up here, click on this icon. This is for the shapes. You might be seeing a rectangle up there. If you do, just come down here and click on this kind of a funny squiggly thing. And then over in here, set the shapes to frames. And in frames, it's the second one over from the top right there. Okay, let's go about here someplace and then pull down like that and make it oh, about about like that. Doesn't need to be exact, but just about that shape and that size. All right, in case you need to go back to this, I'm going to save this layer. So let's right click and duplicate layer and I'll then hide that one. And that's just a safety. Okay, on this layer, our copy, right click and choose simplify layer and that converts it from being a shape layer into just a straight graphic. And I'll put that kind of in the center. There we are. I think I'll make it a bit larger. So, looks pretty good. We may adjust that size again as we go, but I think right about there it looks pretty good. Okay, now take the magic wand and click into the middle of the shape. You should see that middle section selected. Come down to this layer and make a new layer. You want a new layer underneath your shape one copy layer right there. And then go to your paint bucket and over here in the options, click on the right hand side. And this is your pattern fill. And in the pattern fill, set this to rock patterns and you want that upper right hand corner right there that's the granite pattern okay then click inside and it fills that with that granite pattern we can now deselect and then go to your top layer and then click inside that black border and that fills that with that pattern as well it's just kind of a repetition here you can almost see a, a grid pattern in there we're going to fix that Let's first do it down here on the main layer. That's, I'll call that the body layer in here. Go up to filter, come down to filter gallery. And in the filter gallery, you want to be in the distort section right here and ocean ripple. And that just puts in a random distortion and that hides all of that repetition in there. And then choose OK. It makes it look much more natural. Also softens it up just a little bit. Do the exact same thing for your top layer. This time just go up to filter and click the top one here. That just repeats your last filter. There we go. That's all taken care of. Let's now work on the detail on these two shapes. We're still on that top layer, of course. We're going to add a drop shadow to that. Go up here to layer, come down to layer style, style settings, and click on drop shadow. And in here, set the lighting angle over to about oh, 133, 135. Over here someplace is fine. Set the size at 10 and set the distance at 23. There we go. And the opacity, we'll leave that at the 35% and then choose OK. Right now I want to merge that shadow with that shape up here. So right click on the layer name and choose simplify layer. OK, now come down to styles, our styles button right down here. And then go to this one here. This is called the simple sharp inner. Double click on that. And that puts in that beveled edge for us right there. Okay, back to our layers. Now right click on this layer again and choose simplify layer one more time. And that merges that layer style into that shape. Okay, get down to the body of your tombstone right down here. I'll just do a slight value change on that one. And I'll use an adjustment layer for that. So layer, come down to new adjustment layer and levels. And where it says use previous layer to create clipping mask, check that. Choose OK. And in here, we just want to move the middle control right here to 0.6. And that just darkens down that middle section just a bit and close that down. Okay, that much is done. Now we can work on the text on this. Go back to the top layer up here. We'll put our text above the top layer. 
Make sure that your color is still black in the foreground and then grab your type tool. Double check down here, you should see black right down there. Okay, in the type, I'll be using Arial. So just begin typing in here, Arial like that, that takes you to the right section and I'm using Arial black, just a real thick, solid typeface. The size on this is 36 point and the letting on this is 30. Everything else can stay the same. And we'll type in trick or treat and enter. And then pull it down so it's kind of in the area here. It looks like it's a little bit off on that size. Let me check that letting again. Okay, that letting changed on me. We'll put that back to 30. There we go. Okay, so right about like that. And I'm putting the top of this right about at that corner right in here. And that looks fine. All right, now for a special trick on this trick-or-treat lettering. We're we'll doing a bevel on this thing to look like it's been chiseled in. But I have a special trick for that. Go up here to the blend modes and come down to soft light and it almost disappears. You see that just almost just goes away. We'll now add a bevel onto that. Come down to your styles and we we'll use that same one here, the simple sharp inner, double click on that. And there is that bevel. Now I need to change this. So let's go back to our layers and double click on the FX over here that opens up your style settings. And here change the lighting angle to negative 47. It just pulls that around and the shadow is now at the top of those letters. Okay, there we go. That looks just fine. Now on the size, change the size down here to 29, just a little bit larger. And there we go. And that's all fine. Okay, now we're going to merge all of this stuff here into one layer. Come down, hide the background. You want to see transparency like that behind that. And then hold on the shift, the control, the alt keys, and then tap the E key and that merges the visible layers up onto a new layer. We can now hide all of that stuff. We're done with all layers. You bring the background back in again. And then you can put this over about here someplace is just about right. All right, now use the Control T keyboard shortcut. Brings up our control handles. And then set the angle in here to negative 18. And that just pulls it over to the side. Choose OK. And pull it down so that the bottom right hand corner is just at the bottom of the page right there. Now it's a little bit too small, so I'm going to pull the corner up here and just make it a bit larger. And I want it about that size on the page. Okay, there we go. So it's about three quarters of the way up on the page. All right, that is done. Now let's go down to our background and we're going to change the background to a new background. For that, go into graphics and then change this up to backgrounds and then scroll way down. It's a long ways down. We'll see some kind of TV style things down here. There we go. Kind of a TV style grid thing. Just to the left of that is this one. That's the background you want right there. It's actually shadows of people at a concert on some concrete flooring, but it has kind of a neat spooky look about it. Okay, so now change these graphics down to shapes. And in here, I'll pull this up quite a ways and up near the top. If we can find that. There we go, we have these cats. You wanna choose that one right there. Click on that, it'll put that cat right in the middle. Now if the cat comes in in front of the trick or treat, just go over to your layers and then pull the cat below that layer up there. So it's right down here. Let's now pull the cat down to the bottom, grab the corner and we'll pull the cat up so the corner is about like that. And just kind of put the cat just in behind that tombstone over there and about that high and then choose okay. All right, there's our cat. Now we need to adjust the cat's values in here. And for that, come down to the shape layer, right click and simplify. So it's now just a graphic. Now go over to the eyedropper tool and click up here in the darker part of the shadows and then go to the paint bucket tool and then come down here, make sure that you're on the paint side of that and then click into the cat. And it's kind of the same coloration as this stuff is in here. Let's now adjust the values a little bit. And for that, go up to layer, come down to adjustment layer and levels and then check that checkbox right there choose OK and in here on the left hand side that's your black side just type in 20 and that darkens the cat down okay that's all good come down make sure you're on your shape layer still and we're going to blur the edge of that cat so go up here to filter come down to blur and Gaussian blur right here and I have mine set at 5 pixels 5.0 pixels choose OK all right cat's done 
Let's now go back up to our trick-or-treat up here and we'll be putting in a gradient on top of this. Now come back down to your default colors. Hit the icon right there that puts these back at their default black and white. And then go up to a layer, come down to new fill layer and gradient. Check that checkbox, choose OK. And here we go, there's our gradient fill. Now in here, first make sure that this is black to transparent. It should be. If not, click in here and that's that second one right there. Okay, now change this from linear to reflected and click on reverse. That kind of inverts the whole thing in there. And then set the angle here to 124. Looks good. Choose OK. And then if it's too dark for you, you can adjust the opacity up here a little bit. I'm going to set this to 75%, so it's not quite as dark on that. And that's fine. OK, now we're ready for our text. Now use the Control-0 keyboard shortcut, and that puts that full screen. There we go. Now let's go down to the Type tool. And in here, I have a special type I've decided to use on this one. You can use any typeface you want. The one I'm using is called Lino Chisel Regular. And I have a link for this in the description if you want to download this font and use this. But any font is fine. And the size on this is 60 point. And the leading is 45. And then just click up in here someplace. There we go. And type in Happy Halloween. There we go. And I'll position that right about, right about like that. That's pretty good. Right in here someplace. Okay, now we'll apply a special style to this. Come back down to graphics and we'll use a graphic section over here called text. And if we scroll down a little bit, you'll see kind of an orange thing right down here. This is the gradient yellow orange. Click on that to apply that type style. There we are, kind of a nice orange thing. Let's now go back to our layers. And in here we'll do just a couple of little adjustments on this. Right there where it says FX, let's double click on the FX. That brings up your style settings. Let's first add a drop shadow onto this. And I'll leave the lighting angle at negative 47. That's fine. Let's set the size at 7 where it is. Let's set the distance at 15 and set the opacity at 60. Puts in a little drop shadow on the upper side there. Just kind of helps to separate that out from that tombstone in the back there. And then come down to the bevel. Let's make the bevel just a little bit larger. I'll set this at 9 instead of 5 and choose OK. And there we go. There is the finished Happy Halloween card. Now if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button, click on share, click on subscribe, hit that bell icon for notifications of my new videos, and make sure that you check out my complete training for Photoshop Elements, and there's a link for that right down there in the description. Alright, and I'll see you next time.